Greetings survivors and friends, Captain Jack Shadow Franks here with a roundup of exactly what happened in July's big patch, the Deep Sea update. Too soon? Yeah, probably not. Anyway, unsurprisingly, it's all about Rust's watery environs to some degree or another, and there are a number of new things that can be enjoyed now, and some stuff for later on. Oh, and thanks to the team at Face Bunch, I have a giveaway for you today, so stay tuned. First up in this patch, a bigger boat, and potentially a floating base to boot. The tug is here, based on the model you've seen before, but this time saleable, rare-ish. Two should spawn in each harbour by default and built more for comfort than speed. It runs on low grade and needs a bit of room to turn around, but it does have a sonar to detect subs and you will be able to fit an entire zerg on it. Plus, as a first for Rust, you can place a certain amount of deployables here too. To claim your tug, simply clamber aboard and authorise yourself at the helm. Just hold E to see options, much like a tool cupboard, and once done you'll be able to throw some doors and locks on it, one either side of the control room and another on the entrance to below decks. And this is is where the fun all happens, because this is basically a free 3x2-ish base where you can place as many chests, beds, furnaces, benches and campfires as you can squeeze in there. Restrictions at the moment being no electrical, water or industrial systems, turrets, traps, large deployables of course, or indeed a tool cupboard, because that's already part of the boat itself. Not only but also, you can place deployables on most of the first couple of decks too, in case you want to fortify your floating fortress some more or barbecue some prawns. It's up to you. The tug has 3000 HP, you can repair her with wood and metal frags, and if damaged enough she'll sink to the depths, at which point the authorization will be removed and salvage operations can commence. Interesting. Hope her barrels do fine underwater, and so does Chippy. As default, tugs will start to decay 24 hours after spawning and fully decay two days after that, but every time the engine started up, it will reset the onset of decay by 24 hours. Oh, and I'm told that keeping one indoors, if you were thinking of building a dry dock big enough, won't stop the rot, so don't bother. Decay is subject to change for server owners, though, with the following two convars as shown here. So if you're looking for a tug and there are none in the harbours, Try looking in the corners of the map. Next up, a new monument. Not fully functional yet. Presumably this will be where you catch a ferry to another linked server once the Nexus system finally arrives, but as shown in the last update vid, it is at least worth a quick visit in the meantime. No NPCs or radiation yet, and here you'll find some basic amenities such as a car lift, recycler, research table, repair bench, phone, and entrance to the subway system. There's now some loot too, with a number of barrels and crates around, so at least the place isn't a complete waste of space at the moment, but stay tuned for news of when it becomes more useful in the future. Next, the new Abyss Hazmat DLC is here on the permanent store, price point the same as the Arctic and Lumberjack sets, and including several skins. First, not one, but three variations of a diver's suit reskin for the Hazzy. Which variant you get when you reskin is completely random, but no extra benefits just looks and the fact that they'll make you totally stand out in any bushes you're in. There are also four item skins, an Abyss AK complete with seaweed and anchor instead of shovel handle, a pickaxe, unsurprisingly an anchor, a drippy barnacle encrusted metal hatchet, and most exciting of all, probably the sexiest torch you've ever seen that also works underwater. Not only but also, I have a copy of this DLC to give away thanks to Face Punch, so you'll find a link to enter in the description below and I'll randomly pick a winner this Sunday. Now, if these briny shenanigans weren't all exciting enough, the whole ruddy seas also had a makeover. As finally, after two years in development, the new water redo's been merged in, and I must say, it looks so much better down where it's wetter now. Waves realistically move towards land, the shore is tons better to look at and walk along, there's a fancy new transition line between above and below the surface, and storms really ramp things up and make the water choppy when they get going. All in all, there are a lot of small improvements that hopefully add up to one big one, but What's your experience of this so far? Let me know in the comments below. In other news, shipping container skin floors are now conditional and will be metal on both sides unless you have something built over them, in which case they'll be ply on top. Combat knives now untie underwater crates more rapidly, spray cans won't lose durability anymore when reskinning deployables, and lastly, something a bit techy but bear with me here. On the dev blog, there's a section at the bottom on shader improvements. Now, this might seem a bit back-end and not very relevant, but a significant overhaul to shaders is coming, and as well as better memory usage and loading times, hopefully, it should open up a lot more for artists, including getting more out of decals, 
better lighting, new surfaces to work with such as brushed metals, satin and silk fabrics, and subsurface scattering so that ice, silicon, marble and wax can all be more realistically rendered, potentially for skin creators too. Anyway, give it a read if that interests you. As for what we can expect for development in the rest of July, probably a slower month, but there are quite a few things in the pipeline that I know are being worked on and I will give you some more concrete info as soon as I get my hooves on it. Whatever the case, you're now up to date. Leave me a like and a sub please if you enjoy my content. Come join me on Twitch and my socials such as Twitter, Facebook, Discord and my Steam group. Plus you can support me in various ways including through YouTube and Patreon. Links are all below. I shall catch you all soon but in the meantime, keep calm and stay rusty. Cheerio.